Right, so I'll make a start and uh, we're recording anyway, so uh, people can catch up later if they're a little bit um, late or they can't make it. So welcome everyone, both people who are already in the project. It's always nice to see everyone since we're in 11 different countries and uh, also um, to uh, people who joined um, via the, the website. So I'm going to share my screen and just do a little uh, introduction to today's event. So uh, we have um, a very short agenda here. So I'm welcome you, welcoming you. Um, and then uh, we will uh, move on to uh, an introduction to the project, which is very international and multidisciplinary so it's uh, it's very very cool and exciting uh, so Anton uh, will do that and then we will get to meet some of the team members as well so Mark, Anna, Irvish and uh, Jana from uh, different countries so CRG in Barcelona, MDC in Berlin, Copenhagen and uh, also an MBU in Norway um, then I will leave the, the contacts if anyone wants to um, contact us in the future. Uh, and then the members of the audience will be able to um, say hi and uh, also ask uh, everyone uh, questions. Uh, they're burning questions about the project. Uh, and we also have interesting postdoc positions coming up. So anything you would like to know, then uh, we will be here to answer your questions. And uh, it's nice to see so many people from the project. So I think in uh, Anton's introduction, he will talk about the people. So uh, if you want to unmute yourself and kind of just say hi, if he says your name or institution and uh, you're present, that would be nice as well. So I'll shut up now and uh, with no further ado, we will uh, make a start with Anton to tell us a little bit about the project. And then we will continue with Mark afterwards. Excellent. Thank you so much, Anna, for the introduction. I will, oops, oops. I would say I, I've got to share my screen, but something's wrong, unfortunately. Can uh -oh. you, yeah, it is not let me, so it is, I guess, the same problem as you had with the, wait a second. Mm -mm. Privacy issues. I, uh, I just got fixed my laptop and, uh, uh, Okay, I will reboot uh, Zoom in a second, and I will be here in uh, in five seconds. Okay. In a second. We don't have entertainment. I did not plan for that. <laughs> so we will just uh, have to wait. Yes, because it's true that every time you have a, it's the first time that you use a computer on Zoom. If you want to share your screen, then you need to reboot after you do something. So hopefully he will be back soon. And uh, but I think it makes sense to uh, to wait for him uh, before we move on to the other items on the agenda because it's we should start. Oh, it was fast. We should start with the beginning, which is what is this project about and who's working on it and what's happening. I am back and yeah, now it works. So excellent. Da -da 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 -da. I will share my screen. I hope you can see my screen. Yep. Okay, super. Okay, so welcome everyone. My name is Anjun Alverdi. I am the project coordinator of the 3 Amics, and I will give you a short uh, introduction, an overview of uh, where this project is coming from. And uh, also I will set the, the frame, the background uh, of the project, and then give you an overview of the, who we are. And I will start by something by stating something very obvious that uh, we are uh, in a sustainability crisis. As we all know, the resources are limited and we are uh, forced to, to uh, make all our um, production processes as sustainable as possible, as efficient as possible. And uh, that's one of, the, um, one of the main objectives of the European Commission. And the European Commission, uh, since many years ago, is uh, putting a lot of money on, on research in order to create more efficient procedures and also to inform policymakers uh, to make new policy. And uh, this is the, the general frame which uh, 3D Amix uh, is, uh, is framed. So in there, within the European Commission's uh, 
investment and research. As you might know, uh, in the last six years, seven years, uh, there was a huge program that was called Horizon uh, 2020. And 3D Amix is a project that is part of the Horizon 2020, but it was, in the, it was funded in the very last year of this program. And as you might know that now we are already in the Horizon Europe uh, era, but there are some differences, but uh, this is just for uh, technicalities. We are part of Horizon uh, 2020 program. But in Horizon Europe, there are many other projects with similar goals and using similar technologies, et cetera, that will be addressing um, similar research goals. And we are interconnected with, uh, with many other projects uh, in the European continent. Our own project is part of this topic that uh, was released in a 2019 um, call. It's called Healthy Terrestrial Livestock Microbial Ecosystems for Sustainable Production. So what the European Commission was requesting was to um, develop some activities that would address relevant microbial ecosystems of terrestrial livestock and to investigate their effects on the production, health, and welfare of animals. It was as broad as you can see. Uh, the, the description is, was pretty broad. And then they were requesting some more specific uh, issues, like we had to characterize the microbial ecosystems associated with uh, production animals. We had to assess the variability within and between the breeds in different production systems. We should assess so, as well possible ways in which these ecosystems can be managed, incorporate this information on microbial ecosystems into the models used to analyze phenotypic, phenotypic variability in production animals, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So within this broad uh, umbrella idea, there, there were some specific requests that the commission wanted us to, to accomplish. But by that time in 2019, we were working on another European uh, project called Holofoot, that it was addressing very similar aspects. So we were we were addressing uh, generating multi-omic data, not just of the microbial communities associated with the animals, but also with, uh, with the actual animals and trying to understand how these interactions between hosts and microorganisms were um, shaping phenotypes or production uh, indices, so indicators of these species, and try to come up with new strategies to improve these production processes. So when we saw this call, let's say, well, we are, already doing what the commission is requesting in this other European project. So we thought it was an excellent uh, moment. So it was, it was a, a, a huge opportunity to make one step ahead and propose something that nobody had done before. And that was to try understand, reconstruct these animal microbial interactions at the micro scale, scale and in three dimensions. So as you might know, the microbial communities associated uh, with animals and in the gut intesti intestinal uh, environment are not randomly distributed across the lumen, the mucosal barrier, the crypts of the, of the pili, et cetera, et cetera. They have, um, no, they exhibit um, a three-dimensional spatial structure that when we use conventional metagenomic tools, for instance, to, uh, to reconstruct them, we completely disrupt this uh, spatial information. We completely lose what is the locality or what is the position of specific bacteria, the genes that are being expressed, how close they might be to the mucosal barrier or to a specific uh, cell, uh, host cells, et cetera, et cetera. So we thought that it was the time to try generate this data, but keeping this spatial information so that we could really ascertain whether the activation of a specific genes, the production of a specific metabolite was triggered by the, the close the connection between two bacteria, the, the close connection between a bacteria and a host cell, et cetera, et cetera. And this is where the idea of uh, developing this project 3 Amis uh, came. So, I had this idea and started uh, discussing with some colleagues initially, internally at, uh, here at uh, KU, at the University of Copenhagen with Tom Gilbert, with Orbish, which is, uh, who is also part of the project. And then also started discussing this with other partners outside the University of Copenhagen, such as uh, uh, Mark Marti from the CRG in Barcelona. Anna told me that, uh, told us that perhaps people will be saying hi. So I am my, uh, Mark, if you want to say hi, <laughs> no. You're very welcome to do so. I'm here. <laughs> Thank you, Anton. Good. So Mark then will give us some more information about their group and what they would be doing in 3D Amics. 
But then through Mark, we also contacted Anna Pombo at the Max Delbrock Institute in the center in, in Berlin. So hello, Anna. Hello, I'm here. And we also contacted Katy Hineva. I don't know if Katy was able to do it in the end, but um, if she's not here, we can just uh, continue. Then we also contacted other people that with different expertises, the, like Phil Pope and Itzik Mizrahi, Mickey Boyson also here at the University of Copenhagen, but uh, working mainly on animal sciences. Michael Hess doing similar research, but in Austria. Then Annelies in ETH Zurich working on in vitro um, micro, micro, microbial community uh, uh, studies. Caroline Faust at Leuven working on microbial uh, college. Sorry, Annelies, I jumped over you. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, I'm happy to be here as well. <laughs> Thanks. And then also some uh, commercial uh, partners, so some companies like uh, Norsvin with uh, Ellie, as well as uh, Aviagen with Santiago and Biomin, now DSM Biomin with Veronica and colleagues. I think Veronica is around. Yes, so, hi everybody. So, <laughs> hi. so in total, we created this consortium of 13 partners from 11 different countries. And uh, so encompassing six universities, two research centers and five companies. And all these different partners have very different expertises because we will be uh, interacting people with expertise on genomics, microbiology, metagenomics, structural genomics, animal science, metabolomics, data science, microscopy, and I could continue uh, adding more and more uh, words here. But the, the key message here is, and it, it is that our consortium is an extremely interdisciplinary consortium that's uh, with people that excel in relatively distant uh, research fields that we are all really committed to work together to really move the frontier of the research ahead from where it is uh, right now. So these 11 partners uh, created this uh, project proposal, which was uh, its uh, short name is 3 Amics, but the long name is three-dimensional holoomic landscapes to unveil host microbial interactions shaping animal production. So it can be quite complex. So we try to avoid uh, using this, uh, uh, this very long um, uh, title. But basically 3 Amics is a project that uh, started in September, uh, two months ago, and will be running until August, 2025. And it has a budget of 10 million euros for doing the research that uh, we promised the European Commission we would do. And this is the overall structure of the, of the project. Uh, we have nine work packages that are clustered in four uh, sections. There is one section that is uh, dedicated to management and dissemination, exploitation, and communication with two work packages. Then we have one section on technology development with three work packages in which we will be generating and developing new technological approaches to generate this uh, microscale three-dimensional reconstructions of animal microbiota interactions. Then once this technology is developed, we will transition into another section with two work packages in which we will showcase or we will implement this technology to address um, issues that are of relevance for, for the industry in Europe, for poultry industry, as well as uh, swine industry. And in the end, we will have two other work packages that will be dedicated to assess the implementation of this uh, technology in industry, research, and beyond. So our idea is that the, the part of the technology development will last about two years, uh, starting now and, and until the end of 2023, more or less. It will be overlapping also with the te technology showcasing because we will be running some experiments, some trials, that animal trials that will last over uh, a few months. So then we'll be, once this technology is developed, that we will be implementing on these trials. And in the end, in the last year, we will be assessing uh, this technology and the impact of this technology in research and uh, in industry. So regarding the first part of the project, technology development, this is a complex uh, figure that we created, but it will give you an idea of what uh, we are already doing. So in this first part of the project, we are running some proof of concept trials. So these are small scale animal trials that are um, aim at generating the initial samples that, that we'll be using for uh, 
starting to develop this technology, as well as to feed the in vitro analysis that we would be also running uh, with Annalise in the ETH Zurich. Then we will be slicing and micro dissecting the samples and then working in two different aspects, working on generating data, nucleic acid data, genomic data, transcriptomic data, and metabolomic data. So using mass spec uh, technology. And then all this information along with imaging, information, uh, imaging data will be digested by Mark's group at CRG in Barcelona for generating these three-dimensional reconstructions that will enable them to do the actual research on understanding these interactions between animals and microbi uh, microbiomes by uh, using this new type of, uh, of data to analyze this. Then once this technology is developed, we will showcase it in, uh, in different, um, in different uh, experiments. And we will be running five experiments in total. One, uh, three will be on poultry. Then we will be mainly addressing health challenges. And there will be other two trials that will be on, on, uh, on pigs and mainly addressing nutritional challenges. For the poultry, we'll be running three trials, one with an adenovirus challenge, another one will be with a salmonella uh, challenge, and the last one with a histomonas uh, challenge. The three experiments will have uh, different study designs that will be addressing different questions, but the, the common topic is that we'll be addressing three, um, three pathogens that are nowadays affecting the poultry industry. And then for the, uh, the, the swine part, we have two um, experiments, one dedicated to digestibility and the other one testing prebiotics. And in these experiments, we will be uh, testing different products of commercial uh, partners like Biomins, Poultry Star, Feed Additive, Aviagens, uh, Ross 308 uh, Broiler uh, Chicken Line, Norshvin's TN70 swine, uh, swine Line, and uh, University of uh, Veterinary University of uh, Vienna's uh, vaccine against the histomoniasis. So researchers from universities and research uh, institutes will be collaborating closely with industrial uh, partners to address this, uh, all these questions by this industry academia collaboration. And then in the very end, we will be implementing and, uh, and assessing uh, this, uh, the results and uh, not just uh, how good or how um, accurate the results that we generate are, but also what would be the economic impact and the and the social impact of implementing this technology in the short term, mid term, and the long term. So right now, the, the consortium is comprised by all these people that are shown here and more. So we are about uh, 30 people working in, in 3D Amix right now, but we need to recruit uh, new people. We need to recruit postdocs. We need, re need to recruit research assistants, etc., to make this research possible. So this is why we uh, decided to, to organize this event so that we can show you firsthand what we are planning to do. And then we would also like to interact with you to know what are your concerns, your questions, and then we can know each other better. And hopefully then we can all get what we want in the near future. So this was everything from my part. I will stop sharing screen. Uh, thanks very much, Anton. Oh, sorry, my computer went a bit crazy. Um, yeah, and so the, it, it is already a very, multifaceted uh, project and then the the cool thing on top of that is that the the technology and the protocols that uh, we develop can actually be um, then applied to many other things um, outside of, of the scope of this project so that's uh, an extra uh, but uh, as you said very well uh, let's uh, meet some of the uh, partners and learn a little bit about their lab and uh, what is their um, role in the project and uh, how they would like to expand uh, their team, which is both located where they are, but it's very interactive uh, with, the, with the rest of the project. So we will start with uh, Mark and hopefully your computer will be working just fine. And you'll... Let's see, can you see my screen? Perfect, yes. Bien. Okay, thank you very much for all the participants today. My goal today is to get you an overview of the lab, what we do in Barcelona, and what a better slide to start with, with actual people who do the work in my lab. 
I'm not going to introduce them individually, but I want to, you to get an idea if you are planning to join our lab in the future. And, and this is one of the goals today to identify good candidates to uh, join this team. You should know that the, the team is composed right now by 10 people, but it's growing as we speak. Um, I have to gender balance my lab. We have a lot of uh, ladies, uh, which is quite as special for a bioinformatics lab, but that, that has happened which I'm very glad it happens, but I still have to gender balance. What I don't have to balance is the proportion of postdocs and PhD students about half-half. So I think we have a very good equilibrium and, and we have a lot of different expertises from physics, math, biology mostly. And sometimes uh, we also get chemists, even at some point we had an architect in the lab some years ago uh, when we talked about genome architecture, we, we hire an architect actually. Um, we are mostly funded by uh, international grants, but also local grants. Now, historically, the lab has been working. We, we are defining ourselves a structural biologist. So we determine the structures of biomolecules. And lately, we have started looking at how the tissues organize. And obviously, 3D omics uh, ends in that end of the work. We have not yet published anything in this tissue re, uh, reconstruction because the, the two grants that we got, they, they are very young. The, one of them is about eight months old, is to reconstruct tumors and that's represented here. Uh, and the other one that we have is the one that we're discussing here through the omics, which is for material organization in the gut. But mostly we started many years ago when I was a young, PhD student and, and postdoc, uh, we, we, we have developed uh, methods for reconstructing three-dimensional structures of proteins based on homology um, approaches and also small ligands. Then we also worked on RNA uh, molecules. But for the last about 10, 15 years, we've been working very heavily on reconstructing three-dimensional genomes based on sequencing data. And that is what our lab is mostly known nowadays. In this field. Hopefully in the future it will also be known by reconstructing tissue based on omics data. But the point I want to bring is, is that we might not be experts in, in very much experts in each one of these fields, but what we are experts is what is represented in that slide, which is the mathematical foundations behind trying to reconstruct all, this, all these different biomolecular objects. What well, we've worked is in this, in this F here, which is not as simple as it looks, but what we try to do is always try to understand how experiments are performed over a particular object. In the case of 3D omics, the cats, the cat of uh, the farm animals. Also all the analysis can be, that can be done based on omics data sets and, and computation based on those omics data sets. And we have uh, an entire world package for this in, in the project. We also look carefully at the physics. However, here is going to be much more complex uh, than in doing proteins or RNAs because the physics of the objects, so they interact and the physical forces attracting them are not trivial to understand, but also evolution. And we have tons of uh, people working in evolution in this network. Uh, evolution is very important to understand the relationships. So the point is that any of these observations that you do can be a mathematically formulate into as functions that relate the position of two points in the space. And in this case here, each one of these points is one bacteria in the gut and obviously other cells in, in the tissue of the animal. But we will have to spend uh, probably the next couple of years trying to understand what that F is for each one of the experiments that we perform in the network, the computations, the physics of the object and the evolution of the animals. With the goal that at the very end, we will have a three-dimensional reconstruction of the cat, where then we can start visualizing in 3D all the other omics data sets that we have uh, obtained from the same samples. And that is the goal of my group in within the network is to try to figure it out this. So we, we're looking for two different type of profiles, both of them computational. Uh, but one of them is mostly a 
genomic data integration and three-dimensional modeling. So what we're looking really is somebody that has been working before in, in microbiomes and omics of microbiomes in general and understands the keywords and the benefits of all the data coming out, omics data from proteomics to uh, genomics and, and, and transcriptomics. Because we can provide very easily to this fellow, we can provide it aspects of three-dimensional reconstruction, but we hope that the fellow will help us to uh, navigate these uh, data sets that we are not that familiar with. Um, then we also need a second postdoctoral fellow, but that one will be mostly focused on probably a more computational person, programmer, focus on how we are we going to visualize all this wealth of data so that we can transmit information easy across the network and information that can then be interpreted in a proper way to subtract the maximum biology from, from the actual three-dimensional object that you that the other fellow would build here. So these are the two types of fellows that we're looking for within the network. And I'm super happy to hear anybody that might be interested on in these two positions. Now, where are we within the entire picture? that Anton has introduced very nicely. And this is one of the figures we had in the, in the proposal. So we are really somewhere around here, these this steps here. Uh, so obviously we are not collecting the samples. We might be very much in close touch with the slicing and microdissecting part of the network because the way that we will analyze the data, we need to understand how the data was obtained and this is part of obtaining the data. But at the same time, we might inform what is the best procedure here to obtain the best three-dimensional models at the end of the process? Obviously, there are plenty of groups in the network that do a beautiful omics profiling, but we also need to talk to them very carefully what type of uh, integration it will be done so that the three-dimensional models are the best and the most informative of possible. Sometimes data are um, very exclusive of one layer, but some of the times they are shared between layers and we have to understand this to do the best reconstruction. And finally, this will be later on analyzed and further um, studied. So we are we are in this in this somewhere in this area of the entire pipeline of the network three dimensional three D omics network. So this is the last slide. Just remember that if you join our lab, you will be joining this bunch of guys, which are great people. And at the same time, you would be in Barcelona. We have two localizations, one of them, uh, what we call our beach house, which is the CRG. It's in front of the beach, very nice. And the other one is our mountain house. It's next to the TV area and Football Club Barcelona Stadium, uh, which is also interesting for those of you who like football. Uh, and that's the SENAC. And we belong to both institutions and we spend time in both institutions during the week. So thank you very much. For your attention and if you have any question or you want to talk to me directly you can email me or later on that we have questions and answers thank you very much mark what's there not to like excellent work <laughs> and you have a beach house and a mountain house so yes. that's a very good selling <laughs> um so we will have the the questions uh, in the end and uh, now we can move on to Anna Pombo, who is in a different location. It's the city house, maybe. I don't know what you call it in, uh, in Berlin. So let's hear from Anna Pombo. You just took my punchline. <laughs> so in Berlin, we offer great city life, lots of great restaurants uh, and uh, um, a very international lab. So my, my role uh, in, the, in the network is uh, to... Uh, in, in the development of the genomic technologies that allow uh, the, the identification of specific uh, microbiome uh, within the, the intestinal landscapes. And so this is the lab. We are um, mostly focusing on studying 3D genome topology in mammalian cells. Uh, we are also multidisciplinary and they have uh, from engineers, computational biologists, to molecular biologists, cell biologists, uh, that we know microscopy, genomics, uh, genetics, etc. Uh, and uh, uh, we're an uh, institute funded by the Helmholtz Association in Germany, and we have a number of other funders, including uh, also being part of the International 4D Nucleon. 
Uh, and uh, in terms of our role, let me just take this. Uh, we uh, aim to develop the technologies that enable uh, the reconstruction of the multiomic landscape within uh, the intestinal content. And within the, the 3D omics grant, uh, the aim is really to develop both genomic and transcriptomic technologies, but the kind of um, methods we develop should enable us to move this eventually also to proteomic, and in particular to combine these different layers uh, within one single uh, experiment. In terms of the systems, as Anton, Anton mentioned, we're going to use uh, poultry and swine microbiome, starting from in vitro samples of uh, known compositions. So we know what's in there and we can then, uh, with our methods, uh, see if we, we um, have, have that as the benchmark. Uh, and of course, then move to in vivo approaches uh, using the in vivo systems from the the poultry and the swine. Uh, and in terms of, of the longer term, uh, even beyond the proposal, uh, one sort of dream, I think all of us uh, here, is not only to map the organization of the microbiome, but in particular also to enable eventual uh, uh, comparisons of the, the microbiome with the intestinal cells that are close by, which should have not only impact within our own grant, but even uh, within uh, medical um, uh, human uh, problems. Uh, and the reason that uh, we were invited to join the, um, this group by Anton uh, was that in our lab, in, uh, we have developed technologies to uh, essentially map the structure of the genome. This is in the nucleus of mammalian cells. But these technologies we developed, they actually are based on uh, spatial analysis. So we start with a piece of tissue from which we get a very thin slice. And so the parallel here with 3D omics is that we will have a segment of the intestine and we're going to have a, a, a slice uh, across it. Uh, and the methods we developed uh, essentially enable us to extract the DNA content uh, and more recently also the transcriptomic content of really these tiny amounts of material. Uh, in our current experiments, this is about 10 um, femtograms of DNA contents are extracted and successfully detected through our uh, genomic pipelines, which involve the in-house whole genome amplification technology. And within 3D omics, we plan to develop and move this, expand this technology to the microbiome. Uh, this is then followed by next generation sequencing, and we have a whole range of methods, uh, bioinformatic methods that were developed exactly for this type of data, which involve deciding whether a given part of the genome uh, is or not present within the sample. So we'll have the same for the microbiome. And from there on, we also have a number of uh, spatial uh, statistics methods to infer 3D genome uh, architecture aspects which we will be sharing and uh, negotiating, discussing with Mark Marty Reno for then their expansion and application now uh, within the microbiome. Uh, and so the same as for the microbiome in our current work, we are interested in understanding whether two parts of the genome are very close to each other in the physical space. The same question, you can imagine these dots are different uh, species of microbiome within the intestinal content. And by sampling uh, this, um, the genome, the nucleus with these slices and using spatial statistics, we are then able to, for example, find that the pink uh, part of the genome is always very often close to the blue because every time we slice the pink, we get the blue. And conversely, the pink and the blue are very far apart, never together with the green, because we very rarely sample it. And from this type of genomics data and spatial statistics, we're then able to create maps of uh, contacts, which we will have essentially the same, uh, similar with the, with the microbiome uh, positions. Now, I don't have time to explain, and this is still a bit ongoing, but we now have also technologies which allow us, as I said, not only to extract the genomic content, but also the transcriptome, and eventually also being able to detect specific proteins or even post-mortem post, post 
um, modified uh, um, residues of proteins. Uh, very recently, uh, if you want to look more into the work we do and these methods, we have applied our technology uh, in different uh, brain cells, uh, and we could very, um, in a very interesting way, find different topologies. This is really just to advertise uh, the work that you can maybe see, and in that manner, we could understand how different parts of the genome uh, appear in particular conformations. Uh, and essentially, with the with the bacteria, we have exactly the same problem uh, in terms of recognizing different genomes uh, and understanding what are their special organization. And so within the uh, um, 3D omics, uh, as I think already Anton showed, we're going to be at the stage of uh, working with Anton and other partners uh, that produce the samples and working with them with their knowledge of microbiome sample processing and combining their, their skills with ours in uh, the genomic uh, methods to then extract DNA or RNA uh, and sequence it efficiently. Uh, and we will have um, uh, also will use our expertise in the data processing and quality control. So then we can deliver to Mark's team a really good quality data. And uh, as a final uh, statement from me is that we will have one postdoctoral position uh, available from March. And this is exactly to um, for this technology development uh, challenges. And we were looking mainly for someone with an interest in technology development, ideally with some expertise uh, in uh, genomics uh, and also of some interest uh, in bioinformatics. But we're also very happy to train you. Uh, it's really the, the aim and the interest in being at the forefront of technology development that will be a, a great asset and really required to explore different options and uh, successfully deliver uh, the technologies that we need. And I just finished there and pass on to the next uh, speaker. Thank you so much, Anna. That is very, very exciting technology and uh, hopefully it will be taken even further. So I'm um, looking forward to see how that develops. So from Berlin to Copenhagen, um, now let's hear what uh, Irvish has to say a little bit about uh, the work that he will be doing here in Copenhagen. All right, thank you, Anna. Uh, all right, let me just uh, share the screen real quick. Uh, hold on. Uh, okay, can everybody see this? Yeah? Yes, we do. Okay, all right. Uh, so thank you, everyone. Um, it's a really nice uh, overview to see, um, you know, what this uh, grant and project represents. As you can see, it's very multidisciplinary. And I think uh, hopefully after introducing uh, our section today, uh, I can convey the same point that we also uh, have this very interdisciplinary environment. So uh, my name is Irvish Trivedi. I'm actually located at the section of microbiology at University of Copenhagen. Uh, where exactly Anton is also located. He's at the Center for Evolutionary Horologenomics. So we, uh, Anton and I, were only about, I would say, a three-minute bike ride away. So it's a very nice scenic bike ride to go be between the two campuses where uh, you will be working in this project with us, uh, hopefully. So uh, the uh, section for microbiology... Um, uh, we're actually a very uh, diverse group. Um, we... Right now, we have uh, approximately 35 uh, scientific personnel. And the group is led by uh, Soren Sorensen, who's the um, you know, professor and head of section. Um, however, we have uh, subgroups within our uh, main section uh, where we focus on microbial community interactions. Uh, by that, me, we mean uh, you know, how you have exploitation of uh, public goods and resources in uh, you know, complex microbial communities and um, the metabolic interactions that develop therein. Uh, 
Uh, we also focus on uh, biofilms from the clinical and environmental environment. Uh, so by that, we mean uh, biofilms that are on diabetic chronic wounds, burn and trauma injuries, all the way to biofilms that are also present on uh, plant roots. Um, we also uh, have a subgroup that works on horizontal gene transfer. So naturally, you know, in biofilms, as cells are in close contact, some of the projects that we explore look at how do you have um, transfer of uh, resistance genes or genes uh, that harbor uh, rulance factors uh, between these biofilm members. Uh, and then, you know, naturally, um, we are also very much involved in um, the omics side of uh, research where we focus on um, the early, early life human microbiome and how that relates to uh, development of uh, asthma, eczema, and allergy. So by that, I mean, we also have a um, long-standing pediatric cohort that we work with, and it's been going for about 10 uh, years now, started in 2010. And we look at how the microbiome uh, during infancy influences, um, you know, uh, disease outcomes later in life in these uh, children. And we compare that along with their, uh, you know, the epigenetics data and their environmental and lifestyle data that we have on file. So, yeah, with that, um, uh, you know, our facility, since it's so diverse, we have a lot of different uh, infrastructure that we use. And some of the newest, uh, you know, uh, toys and then also the old workhorses that we have, like the aluminum ISEC. So, uh, you know, as a candidate, um, we want you, I want to fully convey that you will have full access to everything that we have in-house. So the stuff that we use for 3D omics is the Leica LMD laser micro dissection platform. So this one is now already installed and the infrastructure is up and running. And in conjunction with this laser dissection scope, we also have like an in-house cryotome that uh, we use. And um, we also have a uh, confocal microscope that we use to generate very nice, uh, you know, um, uh, pictures like you see as the one above. But the idea of the project is not just, you know, generating really nice pictures. It's also how to make meaningful data out of it. And by that we mean, so, so far what we have done is in these uh, uh, high resolution images, we're able to uh, statistically infer uh, which uh, microbe, like, you know, in a multi-species community, which species are more often co-located with each other versus which ones tend to separate from each other, depending on specific uh, toxins uh, that they produce and how they distance themselves from a competitor or uh, how they actually situate themselves uh, close to a member that they actually benefit from. So we're trying, we're, we do that already in like, you know, a four species to maybe five species uh, biofilm communities. Uh, but now we want to push that to more complex uh, ecosystems, which is where we get into the gut microbiome. Um, then we also utilize the, you know, I mean, so we have the LMD laser dissection scope. We use our uh, confocal microscope uh, heavily in the section as well. We have access to a flow cytometer that is in-house um, that you will have full access to. We have uh, PAC BioSQL, uh, which is um, what we do for our new long read sequencing. And this is also operated in-house and then your conventional uh, Illumina MySec uh, for all the other needs that you would have. Um, and by in-house, I mean that we actually, as a section, we operate these things. It's not part of a core facility, so it would be unrestricted access. And that would be the workhorse of all these projects. Um, and as I uh, said, we are a very diverse group, as you can tell, and uh, lots of smiling faces. So we are very happy to have new members on board the team. Our group is expanding because we have a lot of new projects that have um, recently been funded. Uh, but specifically this um, position that um, we are actually uh, looking for a candidate in uh, will focus uh, heavily in uh, you know, uh, complex uh, microscopy. By that, I mean techniques such as classy fish or hyperfish that looks at labeling uh, species beyond the you know, number that we can already do right now. And then also um, looking at um, 
you know, the multi-omics aspect um, in our um, host uh, ecosystem. So ideally this candidate should have um, a very firm background in microscopy for sure, but also uh, have an idea uh, about a lot of the uh, conventional uh, omics techniques that are used in microbiome research um, so that we can actually, uh, you know, uh, deliver the best product downstream to uh, the collaborators, uh, such as uh, Mark and Apombo and Annalise and them. Um, so uh, this is uh, our section right here. And um, yeah, as I said, uh, Copenhagen is very beautiful. Um, so if you have any questions at all about what our section is uh, involved in uh, further than what I've said today, please feel free to visit our um, uh, webpage. But also uh, just send me an email. We can also have, uh, you know, um, longer Zoom discussions if you're in genuinely interested in this. And then I can tell you more about the project and what we do here uh, at Microbiology. Um, with that, I think um, I will hand it off to uh, Anton to introduce uh, the other part of UCPH. Can you just keep sharing? Okay. No, oh, no. you want me to? <laughs> no, no, no. It was just uh, to avoid the transition, but it's totally fine. No worries. Mm -hmm. It's just a couple of slides. In this case, about our group and uh, who we are. So, uh, in my case, so as Urbish uh, mentioned, uh, we are placed in a different faculty, in a different department, and uh, in a different campus, but very close to each other. And uh, Urbish and I uh, join. Uh, weekly because uh, we have some of the facilities here and then uh, we have we are very dynamic in that sense but our group is part of the center for evolutionary hologenomics and it's also part of the globe institute and these two institutions were created uh, like within the last uh, two years so are quite uh, quite young and the same happens with uh, my research group so, uh, because uh, um I will show you later some, some photos of who we are, but we don't have a group photo because we were created during Corona times and it's quite sad that we haven't been able to, to meet all of us yet. But let's hope that uh, all 16 people will be able to meet uh, at some point uh, early the next year, but well, who knows? But the point is that we are a young, a very dynamic research group that was uh, founded uh, two years ago. We are uh, 16 people right now, and we specialize mainly in studying, uh, studying animal microbiota interactions uh, to address ecological, evolutionary, and applied uh, aspects to, to animal production. And we generate and analyze uh, multi-omic data uh, in order to do so. And uh, we are in charge of coordinating uh, multiple international projects, uh, focusing and addressing different uh, questions. Uh, Hall of Food, the project I mentioned before, and 3D omics are all around generating multi-omic data to address uh, production challenges. While I am also coordinating another international uh, initiative, with this, which is called the Earth Hologenome Initiative. In this case, is, uh, the aim is to generate and analyze joint animal genome and microbial metagenome data sets to address ecological and evolutionary uh, aspects. So we are here in the interface between applied and basic uh, research, but always working on animal microbial interactions. So if you want to learn more about uh, our department, which is the Globe Institute, you, you have the website there. Our center of research, which is the Center for Evolutionary Hologenomics, the website is there. And I, we also have the dedicated website for, for the research group. So. This is who we are, 16 people. Uh, we don't have two sparrows in the group. It's just that we were missing photos of those people. But uh, we will be also recruiting uh, one or two researchers uh, the next year, not early the next year, but uh, because we will need to define the, the actual uh, needs that we have in 3 d mix. because depending on how well the, the, the technology development goes, then we might decide to to have a, a different uh, profile, but take home messages, we will be also recruiting a bit later than the, the rest of the people that presented themselves uh, uh, in this event. So you are also very welcome to, to contact uh, myself, or me, or Anna Brissimo, who is the project manager of 3D Amex and also part of our research group. So this was everything that I wanted to show you. And from the KU side, we also have Mickey, Mickey Boysen, who is from the same faculty as we are, but a, di but a different uh, department. He won't be uh, hiring, but uh, as he is here, I think, Miggy, 
it's time for you to present yourself. <laughs> yeah, hello everyone. Well, uh, we've met before, I guess, but uh, so we are doing, uh, I'm, I'm part of the veterinary clinical microbiology group, which is uh, on the veterinary side, obviously, and uh, we do everything that has to do with animal infections, animal models. And uh, most of what we do is, is develop new models and also assess different, uh, first of all, vaccine. Uh, we do a lot of uh, efforts in, in vaccine development, but also different pro and prebiotic uh, applications, for instance, in, uh, in, and use them in animal models. So it's, it's mainly chickens, uh, but also trout. We do a lot of work in and, 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 and pigs as well. So um, we have uh, different facilities at the, the veterinary campus, which is uh, dedicated for infectious, uh, infectious model uh, work, but also we have this, uh, and this is something that we're going to look into very soon. We have a facility where we can have um, piglets that are milk fed, um, so single uh, pen, um, single pen uh, pens for, for piglets where we can uh, feed the milk. I think his connection got Just a second. We experience in, in real life. Um, so this is around when the pigs are three to four weeks old. They will transition from, from uh, milk feeding to, to solid feed. So this is where we expect to to get some of the samples uh, from from uh, also from this uh, to to go into this project. So um, yeah, that's uh, we we do uh, a lot of animal work, and even though that's not uh, highly popular <laughs> in many uh, places, this is uh, I think quite important to uh, to get uh, biologically relevant data out of it. Uh, so we like to have uh, a lot of in vitro work first. But uh, in the end, we, uh, we, 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 we tend to, to end up in the right host uh, for that specific question. Otherwise, we will simply not be able to get the complexity into the, into the system and, and to describe it as it is uh, on the real circumstances. We will not be hiring uh, right now um, on this project because it's, it's, uh, most of the work is... is um, is well it's actually for a fairly fairly short period but also uh, we have uh, it, it some of the work we do is it takes a quite a lot of hands-on experience i think uh, Irvish and uh, Carlotta have already have already noticed that so um, it's um, it it takes a bit of time to get people into this so so we we do not expect to to hire anyone at the moment but hopefully we can get we might be able to get some uh, additional projects in in this in this area and can uh, can work on with that in the future. That's that's what I wanted to add to it. Thank you, Miguel. Uh, yeah, I just I would have to follow up and say that, uh, so Mickey's also in the same city as us and we already go and work at his campus. And I think uh, in the consortium so far with all the different partners, we've already had a chance to go and visit Anna Pombo, which was fantastic. And MDC Berlin is a beautiful campus. And Mark, I can only guess what the beachfront property looks like. <laughs> um, and uh, we'll also be going to uh, ETH uh, soon. So I think the main thing that I can convey is this is a large project, but I think amongst the members we have already discussed that we're hoping that candidates would be up for, you know, a lot of transfer of knowledge and maybe also if they're curious about it, going and seeing the other campuses and visiting there and then have a lot of transfer of knowledge going on. And I think that's, that's our goal in this uh, project and consortium. Yep. Thank you very much, Copenhagen. And uh, we also have Carlotta. Would you like to just say hi? <laughs> I'm not sure if my microphone is working. Hi to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a postdoc here in uh, Copenhagen at the, uh, the Globe Institute. And I'm mainly the one working on the project now. And I hope that I will have someone else on board soon. Yeah, thank you very much, Carlotta. And uh, we will continue in the uh, Scandinavian countries. <laughs> so <laughs> we will finish with uh, Jenna, who is uh, representing Phil's 
lab from NMBU because he's uh, away sampling fish as you do. Um, so uh, do you prefer to share your screen or shall I share mine? You're muted. Oh no, the button is not working. Uh, no. Nope. Okay, I'll start sharing my screen. Maybe the sound oh, button oh, will work. Sure. Oh. Sorry, I, I was on mute. Yes, please go ahead, share your screen of the okay. slides. Yeah. All right. So, yep, I share the slides and you. Yeah, talk. yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, yes. Yeah. So hi, everyone. Obviously, I'm not Phil. Phil is a lot more tall and more blonde than I am. <laughs> Anyways, um, he's uh, out sampling about 2000 fish uh, with the, the, you know, a few other postdocs. But I'm a postdoc at the lab and it's um, a microbial ecology lab. And we study all sorts of um, interesting environments, including some of the um, gut ecosystems uh, in cows, pigs, chickens, um, et cetera. Uh, currently, we're starting to look at a lot of uh, host microbiome interactions. So I think this is where the 3D omics comes into play. Um, and uh, yeah, next slide. <laughs> uh, this is the current team. Um, I know that uh, Phil is recruiting uh, PhD students and postdoc students. So I encourage you to just uh, go visit the group website and read about um, all the research that's doing that's going on in the lab and contact Phil for um, any uh, position inquiries. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Thank you so much, um, Yena, and uh, I will just add to that, that uh, we are a huge consortium and we will uh, hire some people uh, to expand our team. And at some point we will also do a lot of uh, dissemination and networking and so on to kind of increase the, the stakeholders. And I would just like to mention that uh, we have a sister project um, called um, Hollow Ruminant, I think it is. And Phil is also uh, involved in that. So basically, it's similar to, I don't know very much about the project yet, but it is similar to um, uh, 3D omics. But we are looking at monogastric um, animals, and then hollow ruminant uh, will be the counterpart looking at uh, um, ruminants. So then uh, hopefully the two projects will also um, interact in the, in the future. So the family is even bigger. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, yeah, so I think, don't remember which button I pressed to make this go. But basically, if I can make the slide move, <laughs> there we go. This is the part where we now contact, uh, share the contacts. So uh, if um, anyone would like to contact us and share these positions, if you know uh, anyone who uh, might be interested. So then we have a, a website, uh, 3domics.eu, where you can find all the information about the project. Uh, you can contact me via 3domics at ku.dk. Uh, or follow us on Twitter. So our social media handle is 3D underscore omics. And then we also have the contacts here uh, for the various people who will be recruiting. So um, of course, at some point, there will be proper um, job ads in the different institutions, websites, and so on. But uh, the, the aim for today was kind of to introduce the, the project to the world and then um, the, the current team as well as how we expect to um, expand the team in the future to do all this very ambitious work that uh, we set out to, um, to do. So, oh, Michael Hess is here um, from Vienna. So uh, 
And after this, I only have one more slide and it's finally now time to, okay, maybe that was not the button. I'm not very good with this. Or maybe my computer is just too slow. But basically it said Q&A time now, <laughs> meet the team and interact with the team. 